Hi, and welcome to part five of module five, evaluating service delivery models. In part four, of course, we looked at what service delivery models were. So now we're going to look at how they're actually um, evaluated for effectiveness. Models of care where an orthoptist takes on roles or tasks which aren't traditionally performed are what we consider examples of the advancement of orthoptic practice. And innovative service delivery models, therefore, um, at times, not only require a change in the model, but also an extension of the role of the orthoptist or whichever ever other um, health professional it is, for example. So it's important to understand the underlying motivation and key drivers for the development of new roles or models of service delivery. There needs to be a purpose to that change. Objectives need to be established and the change must maintain both safety and quality. And then of course, in order to determine success or failure of a service delivery model or an advanced practice, its effectiveness must also be evaluated. So that step-by-step -step process is shown there in the slide. Task one requires you to read the background section of Comans and answer the following questions. What perspectives should be taken into account when evaluating a service? For task two, I'd like you to review table five of the Alkaizen 2002 paper. And in the table below, list the various outcome measures that studies have used in investigating the effectiveness of redesigned models of care. And secondly, can you think of any other outcome measures that could be evaluated when assessing the effectiveness of a new model of care? For more ideas about that, have a look at that Hollander article which you have already read before. Let's now consider cost review. With the introduction of new models of care or any other healthcare program, it is really important to review the costs involved, how much it actually costs dollar for dollar to produce. In the simplest analysis, the cost of introducing the new service delivery model should either not exceed the cost of the current model, or if the cost does increase, there should be a significant improvement in the actual outcome measures. So for example, the benefit of the new model needs to outweigh the increase in the cost of the new model. And health economics is the discipline which is de dedicated to determining the costs of health, health care. And this includes things like the costs of models of care, cost of intervention, health programs, and so on. Task three requires you to have a think about costs. So read the section titled cost effectiveness, cost utility and cost benefit in Kaplan's paper and answer this question. Aside from analyzing direct costs of implementing a new model of care, what other factors are considered when health economists review the cost effectiveness, cost utility or cost benefit of a program? Overall, in Australia, there is a focus on a model of care approach to health workforce planning, along with other strategies. And in eye health care, the increasing demand on services with the ageing population will see orthoptists needing to advance their scope of practice in order to provide greater support to ophthalmology services. Task 4 should be quite interesting to you. I want you to read the section titled Orthopaedic Podi Podiatry Triage Clinic in the Queensland Health Document Innovations in Models of Care. I then need you to answer these questions. One, what are your thoughts on the effectiveness of the um, podiatric triage clinic? Have they met their objective? And based on the information provided, could this model be used at other hospitals or practices to address similar issues? Two, can you think of any orthoptic triage clinics which could be implemented to address high demand for services? And three, on clinical placement, have you witnessed orthoptists involved in innovative models of care 
or taking on an advanced clinical role. I really hope that you have. Now, if you would like to do some further reading uh, in this area, the following are examples of papers which are related to service delivery models and they cover the um, topic in much more detail. They are provided for you in LMS, so take a look at those at your leisure. So we've now looked at service delivery models and we understand the importance of evaluating a service delivery model. We're going to look at something um, quite interesting next, redesigning care with what's called lean thinking.